My name is Kelsey Goodman. I'm here to blow the whistle on FEMA. There are still people that are missing. Rivers that were existing before have now turned into lakes. There are still communities without power, without water, without access to cell phones or internet. You can go on the FEMA website. The number one goal of FEMA is to instill equity in emergency management. It's not to save lives. It's not to create stronger communities that will weather future disasters. It's to instill equity. It almost feels like I'm being asked to give my opinion on equity to the state, and I am not comfortable at all doing that. Right now, we ask that you do it. You tell us how you did it. And um, the guidance is the guidance until you get further instructions. Tell us your exact title. I am a Hazard Mitigation Emergency Manager. And what is your job description? What are your job duties there? I work with the states to help them implement long-term recovery strategies in order to keep the disasters, um, the loss of life and property from happening during future disasters. I showed you a little clip from the film, Line in the Sand, where, where Zachary had his moment where he couldn't take it anymore. Talk to us about what was your line in the sand moment working for FEMA? FEMA seemed to be very overwhelmed by the disaster, the size of the disaster and the scope, which took me off guard. There was a lot of frustration, questions on the ground from homeowners. Um, it was getting out in the media, social media of locals in the disaster areas asking where FEMA is, why aren't they coming to help? And there was a lot of information being put out by FEMA leadership that was um, really creating a bit of an echo chamber with us as employees saying FEMA's not doing anything wrong. They were sending us emails internally telling us that it was people being homophobic or anti-Semitic or whatever it was. FEMA was doing a great job. Now you've shared internal FEMA photos with us from Boots on the Ground in Asheville. Talk about what it was like for you witnessing all of that devastation firsthand? I haven't witnessed it firsthand. I haven't been to Asheville. I'd uh, say a majority of the, the staff deployed to North Carolina hasn't been to Asheville. They haven't been to Asheville. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, That's why you hear a lot of homeowners saying, we don't see FEMA. Where is FEMA? We don't see them. But contrast, you hear FEMA leadership say, we have a thousand people on the ground. We have 900 people on the ground. That's where the disconnect is. And getting back to the reason why you're sitting down with us, there was a noticeable shift in the way FEMA handles uh, funding opportunities, something called BRIC. Can you talk about that? Yeah, there are annual appropriations from Congress for different disaster funding sources. So the Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities. That's a BRIC. That's BRIC. It's an annual grant program. And it's nationally competitive. It allows for all the states and local governments um, and the federally recognized tribes to submit project applications in order to strengthen their communities. Over the last several years, since 2021 about, we have changed the priorities in terms of how we're awarding that money. There are higher priorities given to different racial groups, different minority groups, and it's really creating internal confusion as to how we're awarding this money. How does that work though? If you have a higher disadvantaged status, why should that make a difference if whether FEMA comes and goes into a community to help people? So when Joe Biden came in office, he signed executive order 14008. And that basically said that we need to give minorities and disadvantaged communities priority over historically historical communities that had not received discrimination in the past. Through that came what was called the Justice 40 initiative, and it said that 40% of certain grant funding needed to go to these quote unquote disadvantaged communities. How does FEMA determine which communities get what grants? I don't know the answer to that. I don't know that anybody really knows the answer to that. They have created different tools over the last few years in order to determine what they call disadvantaged community status. Would you say Asheville is in the situation they're in with Helene because this grant was denied? I don't know. I don't know what, when grants are denied, especially under these 
um, nationally competitive programs, there's no way to tell why they're denied and why they aren't. I kind of want to shift to Christianity and a long-standing policy to bar houses of worship from receiving FEMA disaster funds. Can you talk about that? Within the last few years, when the new guidance was put out in 2023, it was decided that houses of worship were no longer eligible for certain disaster funding. I spoke with my supervisors. They said, it's written in guidance. That's what we have to abide by. If you want to reach out to legal counsel, you're more than welcome. But in terms of helping them to withstand things in the future, that they were no longer eligible for that and I have not been able to understand why or get a response as to why. We are prioritizing the wrong things. We are prioritizing disadvantaged communities when there's no clear definition of what that is. We are prioritizing DEI initiatives and climate change initiatives. Most of it is gonna be based on the racial makeup. The racial makeup. Mm -hmm. But the race doesn't necessarily uh, correlate to economic uh, there's not a direct correlation between race and economic disadvantage. FEMA might disagree. FEMA might disagree. You can go on the FEMA website. The number one goal of FEMA is to instill equity in emergency management. It's not to save lives. It's not to create stronger communities that will weather future disasters. It's to instill equity. So in terms of why one community is chosen over another, we have no way of knowing and neither do the communities. Talk to us about any training FEMA put you through, specifically the DEI portion. So FEMA over the last few years has really been big on instilling equity in equity. emergency management. What does that that mean, is equity? well, I asked the exact same question and I was never given an answer. It almost feels like I'm being asked to give my opinion on equity to the state, and I am not comfortable at all doing that. Right now, we ask that you do it. You tell us how you did it, and um, the guidance is the guidance until you get further instructions. And um, right now, there's no measurement to determine what's good and what's bad, right? This is what the grant guidance says. We ask you to do this. You show us where you did this, and... We move on. A lot of people that do this, uh, whistleblowers, have their own reasons for coming forward and many have fears. Are you afraid of retaliation from FEMA for sitting here and talking about all this? No. I. They may retaliate. They may not. But it was just too much for me to sit and listen to it all and, and not respond. What was your breaking point? There was a lot in the immediate aftermath of Helene. A lot of people on social media videoing themselves stranded in North Carolina in different areas. They weren't seeing FEMA. They couldn't find anyone for help. There was no money being handed out. The $750 payment was being denied to a lot of people who were requesting it. It occurred to me then that nothing was gonna change, that we were being lied to in terms of how we're handling these disasters. We're not doing better, we're doing worse, and something needs to change. We're getting our overtime every day, and there are people just dying. So it's about money? I think it might be about money. I think this is a very lucrative place to work, especially in a disaster. I had somebody in Kentucky earlier this year um, show me pictures of his beach house in Portugal that he was gonna buy with all the overtime money he makes in disaster work. You only have so many resources available. You only have so much time available. And when you're dedicating that time and those resources to things that you can't tie to fact, we've gotten away from common sense. We, this agency has the capacity to be a really good agency. We have the ability to do really good things for the country. Storms are real. They do not discriminate. A storm is gonna hit a white neighborhood just as easy as it will hit a black neighborhood or a Hispanic neighborhood. The more we start separating ourselves based on these metrics that don't matter to a tornado, they don't matter to a hurricane, um, we're just creating issues. Do you think FEMA should be abolished? I think the 
work that FEMA does, people don't truly understand. The people in Asheville and the people in these declared areas, they don't see FEMA because that's not FEMA's job. FEMA is not searching the rivers for bodies. They're not clearing debris. They're not flying the helicopters. We're here to give money and to write checks, to work in offices in the Capitol, and to coordinate. I don't understand why the states couldn't do that just as well, if not better than we could. Yeah, because they're giving your tax dollars to, to, to this agency instead of to flying helicopters around and picking up bodies. And, and we're making people jump through a lot of hoops to get a small portion of that money back. You mentioned the reason you're not afraid. You, you felt... I think when you believe in the Lord, you have faith in His plan. It may not always go the way you want it to. I have no idea what my future is with the agency, if there will be retaliation or not, but I felt that he was calling me to do something and to speak the truth, and so it's my job to be obedient to him. What's happening inside that facility? You know what's happening. They all protect each other. The NGOs. They got the spotlight on us. The federal government. This is dangerous. I don't think we can trust anybody. America, America we made it. The king of the world. Follow the journey of the immigrants. No, I can't do this, guys. The journey of the children. Oh, this is big time. We're, at, we're in a cartel tunnel now, dog. We're in a cartel tunnel. And the journey into human nature. Some things can't be read in a book or a newspaper. They must instead be lived. There's nobody here to stop this. There's nobody.